Before we start the show, I'd like to talk to you about Brandwatch, which is a digital consumer intelligence company. It helps businesses better understand their consumers and buyers with clever software that enables them to analyze conversations from across the web and social media. To find out more, visit brandwatch.com and you can sign up for up to the minute consumer insights in your inbox each week at brandwatch.com forward slash bulletin. And it's worth mentioning that my business, Automated Creative, uses Brandwatch every single day and our business would be impossible to deliver without it. So it's of real pride that I welcome them as partners for this week's episode. Hello and welcome to the Shiny New Object Podcast. My name is Tom Ollerton and I am the founder of Automated Creative. And this is a weekly show where I have the pleasure and the privilege of interviewing one of our industry's leaders. And this week is absolutely no different. I'm on a call with Miriam Istanbuli, who is Global Digital Transformation Manager at Unilever. Miriam, for anyone who doesn't know who you are and what you do, could you give them a bit of background? Thanks, Tom. Uh, sure. So um, I'm Miriam, and uh, as you said, I'm the Global Digital Transformation Manager at Unilever, based out of Rotterdam right now. Um, I started my journey with Unilever uh, almost 12 years ago. So I've done different kind of roles. So I started uh, as a management trainee in sales um, for three years. And from there, I moved into channel marketing roles, uh, in the food service industry. Uh, then I did some trade marketing roles, uh, and I switched from there to e-commerce, uh, working with our food service distributors on launching their, um, order taking tools with us. And then finally, uh, from there, I got into digital transformation, uh, where now I'm responsible for global change management, uh, deploying, uh, an in-house uh, system globally out to all our markets to manage it and product data. So I don't think we've had anyone in 170 episodes that switched from trade to e-com. How did that happen? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, so yeah, it, it can sound a bit strange to move from traditional trade marketing to e-commerce, but ultimately, if you think about it, um, it's kind of the same principles that you find in trade marketing, uh, which are all around the four P's of marketing, product, pack, pr uh, place, promotions. We do the same thing in e-commerce. And I was really passionate to try to evolve in the digital world uh, from there. So it kind of made sense career-wise, but I think what really triggered me to make this move uh, was this incident that happened one quiet morning in the office. Uh, I was sitting next to um, actually our digital marketing lead uh, and we were sitting next to each other and there's this aisle this separating us. And uh, our general manager walked down the aisle in the morning, literally walked straight to her desk, said good morning and completely ignored me. And I remember that moment, it just uh, switched this light bulb in my head. And I realized at that moment in time that if I did not switch my career in a more digital direction, I was never going to get told good morning <laughs> by this general manager. <laughs> So I think that was the moment when everything changed for me. That's a great story. And have you had that good morning yet? Are you at a good morning status yet? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Get to it. So, so you're clearly ambitious and entrepreneurial and to spot an interesting bit of data like that and changing your career is, is really admirable, but I usually find with um, ambitious people, they get overwhelmed because they say yes to a lot of things and they do a lot of things. And as a result, life and work can get a bit too much. So how do you deal with that? How do you deal with overwhelm when it happens? Yeah, that's a great question, Tom. I think um, nowadays more than ever, uh, more and more people are feeling overwhelmed, uh, not just in their uh, professional life, but also outside of work. And it's just simply the nature of, of the world right now. We're continuously bombarded with uh, messaging, uh, communication, ads, and things like that. And I think for me, one way which helps is just to take a step back. And, um, you know, as a yoga teacher, what I really value is just that uh, breathing 
space, you know? So I take a step back and I try to take like 10 deep breaths and just refocus my attention on the priorities. So I ask myself if it's a, a work situation, what was it that we are trying to do, you know? And I think one thing I learned throughout my career, thanks to uh, my mentors over time is to not really uh, focus or get overwhelmed with the details and always try to just go back to the bigger picture. And then from there, uh, just take the next action. So breathing, pretty affordable, accessible, (laughs) easy. Why do we all struggle to do that? Because when you say it, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yes, of course. In mental note, do more breathing and have have a yoga past as well. But but yeah, I've stopped doing it. I I completely believe in it. I'm complete. I'm at the bottom of the funnel. I'm converted. You know, I'm in loyalty. Um, advocacy, but yeah, um, I, I forget to do it. Why, why do yeah. you see as, as uh, career business people that we, we do that? I think when we're just uh, busy working, jumping from meeting to meeting and thinking of the next thing to do, we just often forget to breathe right. And um, one thing to note is breathing tells us a lot about our emotional state and how we're feeling. So uh, if you feel like your heart is uh, racing, your your chest is tight, um, this is a clear indication that you need to take a pause. And my tip here would be to, you know, uh, if you want to relax, always uh, take shorter inhales and much longer exhales. So you can count to like, let's say four on the inhale, take a pause, maybe six breaths. And then on the exhale, count out eight. And it's vice versa as well. If you ever want to energize yourself, you have to take. Hmm. Yeah, it's the other way around, basically. Right. Yeah, I didn't. That, that's a that's a new one. I mean, I, I have this. I have this theory. Actually, yesterday I recorded another show I did called Advertisers Watching Ads, and I literally said on the call before I press record, I'm going to turn off all of my productivity apps, right? Which was like yeah. um, Slack <laughs> and Asana and WhatsApp and Zoom. And then it's just like, like, I think there's a real tension between what these companies need, which is our constant attention. Like the yeah. more times Slack is opened, the more times Asana or Trello, all, more times that's open, the more their shareholder value goes up. Yeah, but true. the more time those things are opened, the more our productivity goes down. TBC. Sorry, I don't have any data on that, but you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. like I, I've deleted WhatsApp from my desktop because I'm just, I was always, oh my God, there's a notification on WhatsApp. Oh, it's just some boring group. I mean, you know, for example, um, so how do you, how, how do you deal with that kind of that tension that you, you that, str- the, that you strive to be successful and to be proactive, but you're also trying to meditate at the same time. That must be a real, two different forces pulling in different directions. So keen to get your view on that. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Um, I think that's the only way to kind of progress uh, nowadays, you know, uh, especially with remote working. Uh, it's uh, technology drain or fatigue is becoming more and more common, uh, especially in my kind of uh, global type of roles. I'm on calls from morning to evening. So uh, the only way that I could cope with all of that is to uh practice mindfulness and uh, breathing techniques when I can. And uh, to your point, uh, I think uh, your earlier question on how can I uh, keep my focus when so much is going on, it's exactly the point we were saying about WhatsApp and Slack and all these uh, apps that keep trying to send us messages. So I, one of the first things I do is I put my phone in my in my bedroom uh, and I put my status as busy on Microsoft Teams and I literally try to stop everything around me so I can just uh, take a moment to uh, reassemble my thoughts, you know? Yeah, the heavy lifting I'm trying to do at the minute is I'm trying to delete Gmail from my phone because look, like, I'm w- working from home. Why do I need it on my phone? Really? Exactly. You know, like exactly. is, 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 what message? Like, and I find myself checking my email on the stairs. I'm like, what? why? It's nothing, <laughs> nothing. I'm not that important. If they it, nothing away. Anyway, this, it, I'm talking about myself too much. It's about you. So I'm really curious to know, do you have a top marketing tip that you've, or you find yourself sharing most often? I mean, I always think, uh, like the simple basic tip is always the most uh, impactful one. And for me, it would always be like, listen to your consumers. 
So don't make up in your mind what you think you heard from your consumers, but that would be my ultimate tip is to actively listen to what people need to try to find that, uh, you know, the need that you're trying to address basically. So how, what's the best way to do that? Be mindful. <laughs> <laughs> so I think when you're listening, uh, one of the ways in which you can successfully actively listen is to be present in the moment. So when you're doing that focus group, when you're looking at the activity of your consumers on your uh, digital touch points, except like really have an open mind and just um, you need the headspace to kind of understand what they're going through to uh, have that empathy to understand what their pain points are. And only by, by meditating and creating that headspace in your mind, will you be able to, to relate to their needs. So uh, it's got a slight pushback on that. I had a podcast uh, went out earlier this week with a guy called Miguel Magalhães, uh, who's a brand manager on Tampax at P&G. And his, what he was talking about, his pod, his shiny objects actually was market orientation or your your position in, or your positioning in the market, um, and he he seemed to think that everyone got very focused about the consumer, whereas the the, the bigger or, or more sensible play in some ways is just to get your market orientation right because you could have t- ten different brands all listening intently in a mindful way to the consumer, and then they all go, oh, the consumer's problem is X, so we're all going to solve that. Whereas the one brand that market orientates could go, oh, those nine other brands are after that pain point. I'm going to go after this one. So mm. just, just curious to know um, how, how you how you feel about that. How does listening and being empathetic and mindful with consumers tally up with proper market orientation? So sorry, if I just understood this correctly, is it more around defining the pain point? Uh yeah, I just I, it, I I'd never really thought about market orientation. I was always very customer centric in, in my approach to mm. marketing. So just curious to know how important you think that is, and um, is that something that how does that work with a proactive listening approach? Yeah, so I think Tom, there's no one size fits all approach. It really depends on the brand and the product, uh, and you just do then what's right. Uh, for your brand. So if I just take it from my current um, work experience where I'm trying to launch a quite complex uh, in-house uh, system, uh, the only way I can actually land this with my quote unquote consumers who are now my internal colleagues is to really listen to their pain points today, uh, understand how they do their jobs currently and just position my in-house system as how it's going to improve their day-to-day life. So for me, I found that by having an open mind, listening to feedback and then communicating back to consumers, you know, how you're actually tackling that feedback, that's the the best way to get them on board uh, with your brand or your, your agenda. This episode of the Shiny New Object podcast is brought to you in partnership with Manfest. Whether it's live in London or streamed online to the global marketing community, you can always expect a distinctive and daring blend of fast-paced content, startup innovation pitches, and unconventional entertainment from Madfest events. You'll find me causing trouble on stage, recording live versions of this podcast, and sharing a beer with the nicest and most influential people in marketing. Check it out at www.madfestlondon.com. So we're at the halfway stage now. And so we're going to move on to your shiny new object, which is simplifying things. So yes. what does that mean? And why is that your shiny new object? Uh, yeah. So for me, Richard Branson once said, simplification is the utmost level of sophistication. And since I read that quote uh, as a teenager, I remember it really resonated with me. I think a lot of times, especially now, like all the um, technology that's coming and uh, the world is, you know, really advancing. I think we often think that by making something more complex, it's like we're doing it better. But I found throughout my career that the more simple we keep things, um, the more effective uh, 
at the end of the day, especially that if we just consider that our consumers are in fact getting bombarded by a lot of messaging, then what we communicate has to be simple in order for it to, to register or resonate. So I'm very passionate about simplification. So in your role, like digital transformation, that's incredibly complicated. So how do you, how do you simplify that task and that role and that mission without dumbing it down too much? Yeah, so ultimately I have to bring together basically uh, technology and business understanding, you know, kind of I'm that person that links the two together. So what I try to do is just um, stay close to our tech team and understand how they're working and then use my business understanding to try to simplify the concepts, the the terminology, the naming conventions, uh, and turn them into something that our, uh, our business would understand. Uh, so as you said, it's not an easy task, but I, I think having all these years of experience inside the company really helps me then be able to go back as a credible person to go back and explain complex technology ideas back to our business. Can you give me an example of, of how you've done that in the past? Um, yeah. So now, for example, uh, yeah, we're working on our roadmap planning and uh, we have so many governance processes around how we manage feedback and change requests and uh, improvements to the UX and UI. And I basically have to just understand from our tech team, how do they prioritize all these changes? What are the criteria that they used to consider? And I have to explain it back to the business so that they understand why, for example, things take the time that they take and actually what's our, our process, what happens behind the scenes. Um, and only then will they also be more understanding with us when, you know, if we face, let's say, a, a delay or a hurdle or something. Um, I think that's the best way to to get them on board. Right. So listening to you say that, I, I was trying to work out, like, why, why do people complicate things? What is psychologically, what's going on there? Is it to make themselves look clever or to stall for time? Like, Why is there an inclination to complicate things when I don't think anyone would disagree that simplification is, as Branson put it, uh, an element or the uh, equal sophistication? I don't know. I, I find it hard to imagine that someone would, you know, on purpose choose to make something complicated. I think you've clearly never worked at an agency then. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, or maybe people who do that are trying to like hide something or show that, you know, they don't really know. So they just try to complicate it to lose the person in front of them. Um, I think a lot of times it happens unintentionally and just because of the nature of maybe how like a company like Unilever is, is structured we have so many different brands, uh, departments, categories, um, geographies. So it could get quite complicated when you're trying to uh, create and roll out a kind of a global system that's going to please everyone. So in my case, it's really not an intentional thing. <laughs> so if someone listening to this podcast is a, an unsimplifier, a, a complicator person, what are the, what are the steps towards making things simple? I think you should always start with the objective of what you're trying to do. And my friend always said, and I really like that tip. Uh, if you can't explain the objective or the idea to your mother, then it's not simple enough. So I would say always do that test and check with your mother or your grandmother. <laughs> you want to do a really harsh test. <laughs> Uh, you know, you know, I, th I think there's some some latent sexism in this because it's never it's it's never <laughs> dad it's, ne it's never dad is it it's like well if you can't explain it to your mom because what because your mom's stupid but y your dad however would get it instantly no I think uh, um, yeah that's I, funny no because I, I struggle with that and people what was the Einstein quote if you can't explain it to a six year old like how are you going to explain the complexities of digital advertising to a six year old they just they it cannot be done. It, it, like you know, exactly, people, people spend twenty years in that industry and and still only understand like a small part of it, right? So yeah, it, it, it seems it seems like a very Instagrammable or LinkedIn postable thing. You know, if you can't explain it to your mom or your dad or your granddad, like there's but, your tagline. <laughs> <laughs> 
not the not the most catchy. But um, so, but some things can't be explained to to our parents or grandparents. And does that yeah. mean that that person doesn't understand it? I, I, I just want to push you on that a little bit. Um, there's always a way to explain things. I think. Um, yeah, I, I always think there's a way. And um, if you just start there and just think of like the three things you need to do to get there, I think that's already a good, simple starting point. Well, look, and we... Oh, sorry, difficult. go on. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, no, finish that. You have to <laughs> just that point. And it's not just explain it to your mom. It's uh, try to do it within like a minute. That's also another... Oh, like that. explain it, explain it to your mum in a minute. In a minute, yeah. <laughs> well, let's leave it there. That's a, a okay. fantastic bit of advice. So if someone wants to reach out to you about yoga, about simplification, about digital transformation, how would you like them to do that? And what channel is best for you? Uh, I think, yeah, they can reach me on LinkedIn. And what makes a good outreach message to you? Uh, we heard your podcast with Tom Ollerton. So we'd love to connect. I think I will reply right away. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Well, look, Maria, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Tom. It was a pleasure speaking to you. Hi, just before you go, I'd really appreciate it if you could take the time to write a review of the Shiny New Object podcast on Apple Podcasts or iTunes, whatever it's called these days, or whichever podcast provider you use. We're an indie podcast, so it would go a long way for us if you could just share the word and give us a bit of a support on those channels. That would just be fantastic. If you haven't got time, that's also cool. And yeah, if you could tell your colleagues about the podcast and also, if possible, don't forget to subscribe. And I'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, if you'd like to speak on the podcast or be a guest or you think I'm asking the wrong questions, anything, I'd be super interested to hear what you think. So please email me at tom at automatedcreative.net. That's T-O-M at, uh, I'm not going to bother spelling it. Anyway, you'll work it out. Thanks so much.